Let there be light, light, light. Yo, what up, 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 what up? It's Jay Meezy from the Godson Podcast. Tonight we're here. We're going to do a little study. Um, If you could read at the bottom of the screen, the question is devils and demons. Who are they? What are they? Where they come from? Where do we get the concept about them? And what does the Bible have to say about them? Um, With that, man, I just want to say welcome everybody who's here. If you're rocking with us um, in the Godson Podcast, I ask you to share the live. Let's try to get this word out there. Um, and again, man, I, I, what I want to highlight is that anything that I'm going to talk about right now, I'm not saying I'm 100% right about. I'm not saying that it's my, it's my understanding that's correct. What I am saying is that this is what I see in the scriptures within this context and according to how I can understand it at, at this present moment. Um, but I would encourage anybody who's rocking with me to seek this out for yourself. Do your own research. Take it before the Holy Spirit, you know what I mean, and allow him to direct your path. So with that, man, um, we're just going to get started with a prayer because, you know, we we, we start everything with a prayer here. Um, shout out to Jesus. You know, we're here to represent the gospel. You see it behind me. So shout out to Jesus. Um, it's good news, and we're here to talk about it. So with that, Father, we just say thank you for this time of fellowship that you're allowing us to have together, Lord. We say thank you for the Holy Spirit who's our comforter, who comes to teach us and guide us and remind us of the things you spoke, Lord, and to help us gain revelation and an understanding of the things that you said, Lord, to understand the spirit behind it, Father. So we say thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord, we welcome you right now. Let your will be done, Lord, that anybody who's logging on right now, who's um, locked in with us right now, Father, that whatever we speak tonight will land on good soil. It will bear fruit unto the kingdom, Lord. And the truth will set people free from the lies, Lord. Let your will be done on this God's Son podcast as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, amen. So yeah, man. So yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, We're going to start off by getting into scriptures, of course. You know, so again, the question is devils and demons. Who are they? What are they? Where do they come from? And what does the Bible got to say about them? The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. With that, we're going to begin with um, 1 John 4, starting at verse 1. And we're only going to read the first verse. Uh, I want to make a connection here. And it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, if you notice here, he's relating spirit and spirits to false prophets. Some some people might see the scripture as talking about, you know, maybe demonic beings, fallen angels, or so on and so forth. But in this context, we see here that he's talking specifically about false prophets, right? And we know that false prophets are people. Um, and what is a prophet? A prophet is somebody who receives divine um, revelation from God, right? Somebody who can speak the things that God has spoken to him, but uh, you know, according to this context, these people are, are false. So these will be the equivalent of the people saying that, you know, God said this, God said that, but God never spoke to them. Right. Um, and not to talk bad about anybody, because that's not really what the God's son podcast is about. But just to make a point, you know, um, John Ramirez, right. He's an ex Satanist priest. Um, and today he's a Christian. Um, you know, he, 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 um, he doesn't deny Jesus Christ today. So I, I would never try to, um, I would never try to judge his heart or anything like that. But what I will say is that he, you know, he has this thing where he travels, you know, from church to church, telling them about the power of Satan because he was a high priest and, you know, Satan has revealed these things to him and he was working for Satan 
And so therefore he knows how Satan works. God bless you, my brother and sister. This is your brother, John Ramirez, evangelist. John Ramirez, want to be a blessing to you. I got exciting and amazing news. I actually am working on a YouTube channel to put amazing, powerful, powerful, uh, breaking witchcraft curses, exposing the occult, exposing the enemy, teaching you the patterns and cycles of the devil. I'm doing trainings, teachings, uh, how to break generational curses, how to give the devil an eviction notice. Look out for the YouTube channel. Amazing teachings. going to be up there very soon. I love you guys. I want to... Definitely bless you. You've been a blessing to my life, and I just want to get back and be a blessing to your life and teach you how to take the devil and kick him out of your house, kick him out of your, your life, kick him out of your purpose and your destiny. And Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are more than conquerors. In Christ Jesus, God bless you. It's going to be up there. Go to my website. They're going to have some announcements in the very near future. Uh, you can tune into the YouTube channel and get some powerful teachings. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Here we have an ex Satanist. Um, basically, you know, trying to give us the game on Satan, right? He's trying to say, this is how Satan works. And I know this because I work for Satan personally, and he's already revealed to me the way that he does things and all that, right? You expect me to believe you because the one that told you was Satan himself, right? And you work for him. The only issue that I have with that is that the scriptures, and, and I base my understanding on the word of God, but the scripture says that you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. So basically what I'm trying to highlight, right? Basically what I'm trying to highlight is this, you know, not to talk bad about John Ramirez because I'm pretty sure, you know, God is doing the work in his life and I would never try to deny the power of God in anybody's life. Um, and the power of God being the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, right? Um, that's true for anybody that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That, that's the truth, right? So I'm not going to talk, uh, I'm not going to speak according to his salvation or anything like that. All I'm going to do is judge things according to context. So according to context, you're telling me that I should believe you and your details of how Satan works because Satan told you, but the Bible says that Satan is a liar and there is no truth in him. So anything he told you was a lie. And again, you want me to believe in the lie. I just can't do it, Captain. I do it. Have the power. But anyway, so let's just get back to my point that I was making. So again, I'm going to highlight this, right? It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So that means don't believe a lot of these dudes out here that's coming and saying, God showed me this, God told me that, or those that claim to be sent by God when they sit here and they talk to you about things that are not biblical. They talk about the power of Satan. They talk about their own experiences. They talk about their own opinions. And God is saying to test them to test them, to know whether they are of God. So let's find out. Let, let, let's see some of the things that, you know, a false prophet would do, right? So we're going to go into 1 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, right? We just came from 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. And now we're going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. It says this, now, the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Now, God just related spirits to false prophets, and these false prophets will come. People are going to become loyal to them. They're going to get, they're going to depart from the faith. What saves a person, right? Putting your faith in Jesus, give, um, knowing that you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. People are going to depart from believing in that and giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Do you know what the word doctrine means? Let's look at the Greek over here. This is what the word doctrines means. Teachings, right? And let's go into the Greek. Let me just highlight this so you know where I'm at. 
instruction, the function or the information, right? So when these, when, when people are giving you these doctrines of demons, what they're giving you are the instructions, the function or the information about them. So it's completely unbiblical for somebody to sit there telling you they've been sent by God and what they're going to teach you is about demons, right? All right, so now, so then we have to ask the question, what are these demons, right? What are these demons? You see the word of demons and Damion, right? A heathen deity. It's used as an evil spirit, a demon, or a heathen deity. Now, some would call them fallen angels. I don't necessarily agree with that term. But notice here, right? Look at what it says. It says the only exception being Acts 17, 18. Why? Because it refers to heathen gods. Let's look at Acts 17, 18. You know, why is it referring to heathen gods there? Let's go look at that real quick. What we want to do is read things in context. And what I usually like to do, if possible, I'll just read the whole chapter. Let's not go. Let's not go there. For the sake of time, we're just going to go. We're going to start at verse 16, right? Because the one that we're trying to get to is 18. Let's start at verse 16. And he says, now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshipers and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. Then certain Picrian and Stoic philosophers encountered him and some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. Right? So notice that they call him a babbler who's coming to proclaim foreign gods because he's talking to them about Jesus. What? Let's look at that word foreign gods, right? Let's look at that. Foreign gods, here is the word. The gods that they're calling foreign are the same word that's used for an evil spirit, a demon. It's the same word we just looked at. It's a heathen deity, right? Why is this important? Because now what we want to do is let's go take a look at what demons are. And the way to do that, well, the way that I like to do that is by going to the very first time that the word demon is used. That's in Leviticus 17.7. Leviticus 17.7. They shall no more offer their sacrifices to demons after whom they have played the harlot. This shall be a statue forever for them throughout their generations. Right? So here, these people are offering up their sacrifices to demons. This is the Israelites and God has given them a commandment and he's telling them this is not that he doesn't want them to do this anymore because this is people that had just come out of Egypt. And, it, and anybody who understands the history of Egypt knows that they, they worshiped a lot of gods in Egypt. Now, the question is this, right? What are these demons? Well, let's look at what these demons are. And we're going to go look into the Hebrew. Right, so here's the word demons to demons, and it's the it's the Hebrew word sakir, which would also mean a devil, hairy, right? Here we go, a devil goat. Harry, kid, rough, satyr, technically, a he goat. You see this? It's a he goat. So 
being that it's a he goat, we have to ask the question: Why is this a he goat? Right? Why is that a he goat? Why? Why are these people sacrificing their their children to demons? And the word being used is to describe a he goat. Glad you asked the question. Let's look at a commentary of seventeen seven, right? And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils. The word here translated devils literally denotes hairy or shaggy goats and then goat like deities or demons. The Egyptians and other nations of antiquity worshiped goats as gods. See, so the word demon here means a goat or, or a hairy goat. And it was common because the people in them days would make statues and idols of animals, one being a goat. Um, and they would they, they would worship this thing, right? Look at what he says. Um, not only was there a celebrated temple in, in, in Thymius, the capital of the Mendesian Nomos in Lower Egypt, dedicated to the goat image Pan, whom they called Mendes and worshipped as the oracle and as the fertilizing principle in nature, but they erected statues of him everywhere. Hence, the pan, Selenius, Satyrs, Fawns, and the woodland gods amongst the Greeks and Romans, and hence, too, the goat-like form of the devil, with the tail, horns, and cloven feet, which obtained in medieval Christianity. So notice that this idea of, of Satan having these um, goat feet, you know, pointy ears, looking like half human, half animal, and all that, that comes from paganism. That whole idea comes from paganism and it comes from the medieval Christianity, right? So look, it says, which obtained in medieval Christianity and which may still be seen in some European cities. The terror which the devil appearing in this pan-like form created among those who were thought to have seen him has given rise to our expression, panic. This is the Jewish encyclopedia, right? In the Masoretic text, the name is Molech. In the Septuagint, Moloch. The earliest mention of Molech is in Leviticus 18, where the Israelite is forbidden to sacrifice any of his children to Moloch. Similarly, in Leviticus 20, 2 and 5, it is encanted that a man who sacrifices his seed to Moloch shall surely be put to death. Then, curiously, it is provided that he shall be cut off from the congregation. In 1 Kings eleven seven, it is said that Solomon built a high place for Moloch in the mountain that is before Jerusalem. The same passage calls Moloch an Ammonite deity, which is a um, paganism, right? The Septuagint, as quoted in the New Testament, finds a reference to Moloch in Amos five twenty six. But this is a doubtful passage. In 2 Kings 23, verse 10, it is stated that one of the practices to which Josiah put a stop by his reform was that of sacrificing children to Moloch, and that the place where this form of worship had been practiced was at Topeth in the Valley of the Children of Hinnom. This statement is confirmed by Jeremiah 32, verse 35. From 2 Kings 21, verse 6, it may be inferred that this worship was introduced during the reign of Manasseh. The impression left by an uncritical reading of these passages is that Moloch worship, with its rite of child sacrifice, was introduced from Ammon during the 7th century BC. The name Moloch later corrupted into Moloch is an international mispointing of Malik after the analogy of Bashet. Right. As to the rites which the worshippers of Moloch perform, it has sometimes been inferred from the phrase pass through the fire to Moloch that children were made to pass between two lines of fire as a kind of consecration or fubation. But it is clear from Isaiah and from Jeremiah that the children were killed and burned. The whole point of the offering consisted, therefore, in the fact that it was a human sacrifice. From Jeremiah and Ezekiel, it is evident that both prophets regarded these human sacrifices as extraordinary offerings to Yahweh. Jeremiah declares that Yahweh had not commanded them. If you notice, these demons 
um, people offering up their sacrifices to these demons wasn't necessarily talking about fallen angels. It was talking about idol worship. This is important, right? Because when we consider idol worship, we have to consider the law of God, right? And let me, let, let, let's start off with reading Exodus chapter 34, starting at verse six uh, to verse seven. So let's look at this. Let me make sure y'all can see that. And it says, And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. This was God proclaiming who he was to Moses, right? So, and he says that he forgives, but he doesn't clear guilty people, right? And he says he visits the iniquity upon the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Now, where do we find this iniquity to the third and fourth generation? Let's go here. Exodus 20, verses 2 to 6. And he says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourselves a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. So now we already know that God's first commandment to Israel was to have no other gods before him. And if they did have other gods before him and they broke that commandment, he would visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. So this is where we get the idea of generational curses. Now. We have to think, what is God speaking about? What can qualify as a generational curse, right? Let's get into that. Great question. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, and we're going to start at verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. So here we got God telling them, if you don't keep my commandments, curses will come upon you. Curses, right? Now he goes on to talk about a lot of curses, but let's just, let's scroll down real quick to 20 because this is where, where I really want to highlight it. And we're going to go 20 to 22. And it says this, the Lord will send on you cursing, confusion and rebuke and all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the plague stick, cling to you until it has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess. The Lord will strike you with consumption, with fever, with inflammation, with severe burning fever, with the sword, with scorching, and with mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish. Now. This is interesting because a lot of people will look at some of these things today in today's context. You see somebody who's just confused for no reason, you know, and you're very spiritual. You're very like um, a, a spiritual person. You, you're going to you're going to assume this person must be like demonic or, you know, demon possessed or something. You see somebody who is wasting away with disease, you know, and, and there's nothing that can that can be done for them. You know, I know a lot of uh, a lot of people today that would say that person has a, a demon that is stealing from them. You know, these are these spirits that are stealing. Well, if they are spirits, my whole point is to say, who are they and where they're coming from? Right. And it seems to be that these are curses that are coming from the Lord himself. They're not coming from a dark kingdom. As you've seen, as I've been reading, the Lord is the one that's doing these things. He's the one that's saying this. You know, um, so we need to stop giving Satan so much power. We need to start acknowledging who God is. 
You know, um, God is God. There is none besides him. He's the only God, right? That's why he tells you, have no other God before him. He couldn't proclaim that if he, if it wasn't true, because God is not a man that he would lie to us, right? So yeah, man, um, with that, we gonna, that's part one. We gonna get into part two. You know what I mean? I'll be back. Catch me on the next one. Jesus is king, all right? Let there be light, light, light. Ha! Got it! Got it!